going to continue this game of chess or not? You don't look so well. Hmm. Sick. Sick as a dog. Oh, your skin is tinged with green. Can you speak? Your lips are blue like the sky in mid-spring. You know, I should probably be honest with you, Derek. Because you're only going to be alive for another few minutes. This was your few minutes. This exhilarating physical sensation encapsulating your entire body. Ah, oh. will begin crashing down any second. And then your immune system will begin to break down any minute. It's the drugs that are least in your drink. Mixed with the ones that you were going to use on me. I just spy them in your wallet at the bar. I just stole them in plain sight. <laughs> Thank God for those dim artificial lights, eh? Rehypnol. GHB. One of those? What were you planning to do with them? To do to me? You know, I'm... <clears throat> <laughs> I've been I've been watching you for a while now, Derek. As you prey on vulnerable women, hopping from bar to bar. You're a vulture that takes what isn't yours and discards us like scraps of meat on the street. Men like you are pigs. <laughs> Scum of the earth! Using status, control and power to get what you want. All to compensate for your small Viagra-filled cock. Poor shit, that doesn't last very long. You are a vulture that preys on what you think is weak. We are not weak. I am not weak. Um... <sighs> You might wonder why I'm doing this and I'll happily explain the rationale to my calculated plan. If you were to do it to me, then how many others have you done it to? How many women's lives have you robbed away from them? who now live in fear and shame. You're a thief. A thief of happiness, of pride, of joy, of not being scared to walk home alone, of us being treated like some sexual toy. But that ends tonight. <sighs> Is this your wife? Oh. Does she know what kind of monster you are? Fucking a man who lusts over young girls. <sighs> Sleeping in bed alone as you violate someone in your car. She'll get a fright when she comes home. <laughs> <laughs> to see you sitting here dead, drenched in your own piss, sweat and saliva. Oh, she'll be distraught for a moment, but she'll be grateful 
when she finds out what you did. <laughs> oh! I think our game of chess has ended. Don't you, Derek? I told you. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board. Checkmate, motherfucker. I've just given the score. I love my job. A nurse. And I'm really good at it. Or so I'm told. A hospital is clinical. Clean. It's a calming atmosphere. It can get lonely though. I work nights. But I get to chat with all my pals. My pals are the patients. The patients love me. They all tell me I'm their favourite. I have a connection with them. Even in death. always with them when they die. I like to be with them. To sit and talk to them. Even though they can't hear me or see me, we talk about everything. Our families, childhood. My son. He's the only thing I have. And then I get angry. Why are these people being left to die alone? Don't they have families that love them? And then I think, oh, would my son leave me to die alone? No. No, he wouldn't. I've raised him. I've made him the man he is today. He would be right beside my deathbed until my last dying breath. I find it calming seeing someone dead. Peaceful. No more pain. Sometimes I like to help them pass over. They don't ask me to, but I know they want me to help them. It can take days, weeks. I hate seeing my patients hurting. So I just give them that little push towards peace. Peaceful farewell. <laughs> my, my colleagues call me the angel of death. <laughs> they don't understand how I can do it. Be there when they die. Help move the body. Tell the family that their loved one is no longer in pain or struggling. Oh, and the families are always so thankful. No need to thank me. I just tell them, it's my job. You know, after a patient has died, I stare at them, hold their hand, observe their lips turn from pink to blue, the color drain out of their skin. The sensation of hot to cold. I like the cold feeling. Is that weird? Oh, one of my pals buzzes is going off. I best go and see who needs my help. It's strange to look in the mirror and not see bruises. They used to cover my body completely. I was like a painting. My body, the canvas. His fist was like the swipe of a paintbrush. My face, his latest project bright scarlet red bursting full of colour from the wound of my broken skin. 
my eye would turn black, which was perfectly round in shape surrounding my eye socket. Unfriendly and violent. No means of escape. Black would change over time to a royal blue, which added some vibrance to the image of a broken girl who had no idea what to do. <laughs> then a dark purple to add some depth and dimension to the shift in your personalities. When you are around family and friends and then when you are with me, alone at home. Such a stark difference. An olive green would make an appearance to cancel out the dark pigments of the colours used on me before. The colour would then fade to a lurid yellow, harsh and unnatural. A parallel of our relationship. Finally, ending with a light shade of brown. It was a sign the painting was nearly finished. My body was on the mend, in the final stages of recovery. The contusions that appeared across my body due to skin trauma were a symbol of my strength. I'm finally free of the painter. I've been let loose. My body is a blank canvas again. I'm no longer a model. An abuser's muse. Sexy like Jessica Rabbit 
It's a dirty habit. Kendall is the role model. Getting off the table, trying not to waddle. nothing wrong with a little bit of love. <laughs> Happiness isn't being plastic. Everyone has issues, so many used tissues. It's about loving yourself, being at peace with oneself. 